Hello again, gang. Welcome back to part three of our lecture series for chapter 15 in your textbook, Give Me Liberty by Dr. Eric Foner. This section is entitled Radical Reconstruction in the South. The focus question for this section is what were the social and political effects of radical reconstruction in the South? After the passage of the 15th Amendment to the Constitution, which guaranteed the right to vote regardless of race, plus the Reconstruction Acts that we mentioned in the last installment of this lecture series, there was an outburst of political action among former slaves. It was as if all those years of uh, slavery had pent up uh, all of these frustrations, and once they were able to do so, it exploded forth in all sorts of action and activities uh, among former slaves. These actions included such things as sit-ins, strikes, lecture tours by African American political activists. There was the formation of the Union League in the South, which was very closely tied to the Republican Party and sought to galvanize this black political activity, particularly around voting and registration to vote. And within a very short period, the majority of African Americans in the South did register to vote. Now, it is important to understand and to place into context just how radical of a change this was to Southern society, particularly to white Southerners of the region. This completely upended, turned on its head their entire worldview and caused lots of anger and resentment, which places in context some of the later um, violence that would surge in the South as a response to all of this black political activity. But by 1870, all former Confederate states were readmitted fully to the Union, most under Republican control thanks to the uh, huge increase in the Republican electorate in the South, thanks to this black political activity. And most had new, uh, well not most, but all of them had new state constitutions that repudiated such things as the black codes that were features of the earlier constitutions that were written in the very uh, beginnings of the Reconstruction period under the uh, Johnson Plan for Reconstruction. Black political activity in this period did not confine itself to merely direct political actions or voting. It also manifested in actual black office holding. While the highest political offices were nearly all held by whites, African Americans were represented at every level of government. This helped ensure, in part, and at least for a while, equality before the law for African Americans in the South. The vast majority of black office holders were former slaves, a radical transformation in their status and station in Southern society. While most of these black office holders were, were at the small scale, town, city, county, and uh, to some degree state level offices, there were some who were elected to national office, including Mr. Hiram Revels, who was the first African American senator in United States history. Mr. Revels can be seen here in the center of this illustration, along with some of the other African American men who were elected to political office during the period of Radical Reconstruction. Two terms that come up often in any study of the Reconstruction period in the South are the terms carpetbagger and scalawag. And it's important to understand exactly what those terms mean and exactly how these things shaped the situation in the South during this period. First, carpetbaggers. These were generally northerners who moved to the South after the war, many for altruistic purposes, such as to establish schools and things of that nature. Uh, many of these people honestly had genuine uh, desire to, to help the South. Some of them, however, did come to seek their fortune in the South and to uh, take advantage of the devastation in the South 
cost to uh, in invest and reap huge profits in the reconstruction process. Most were Union soldiers who never left after the war ended. Now, they were called carpetbaggers because of the caricature, as you can see in this illustration here, of, them, of these people moving to the South with all of their belongings slung across their back in a sack literally made out of a discarded carpet. Thus the term carpetbagger. Then there was the Scalawags. These were generally Southern white Republicans. Southerners who took to the Republican Party and the Republican ideology. Most were non-slaveholding white farmers from the Southern up country. Both Carpetbaggers and scalawags were disdained by most Southerners. Carpetbaggers were seen as foreigners who sought to profit from Southern misery, and scalawags were seen as traitors to the South and the Southern cause. And the existence of both of these things in the South at the time did much to stir up the tensions between the Republican ideologies that were trying to be imposed onto Southern society and the traditional Southern ideologies that were struggling to maintain their grip on Southern society in the period. So what exactly did Republicans do once they were able to seize power from democratic control during the radical Reconstruction period in the South? Well, there were a lot of positive initiatives that did come out of Republican control, including the first state-supported public schools. For African Americans especially, education was seen as extremely important, in no small part because it was something that was denied to them for so long under the institution of slavery. And they very quickly grasped the idea that education was very important, especially in modern industrial society. There was also some significant advances in civil rights legislation, and they helped to strengthen the position of rural laborers and promoted the South's economic recovery. And in fact, they went on a new quest for prosperity in the South as they tried to remake Southern society and the Southern economy into a almost a mirror image of the North. And this quest included regional economic development, particularly around railroad construction, which had which had proved so significant to the economic progress of the North during the antebellum period. However, Republican governments in this period were hampered by rampant accusations, some true and some exaggerated, of corruption and incompetence on the part of the Republicans in power in the South at the time. But it is important to note that a lot of these accusations of incompetence were more attributed to inexperience rather than uh, some profound incompetence, especially for the African Americans who were elected to office at this time. They had no experience in politics or government and were really learning on the fly and, for lack of a better term, flying by the seat of their pants. And a lot of mistakes, missteps, and misunderstandings did take place in this period, which helped to build this picture, particularly among white Southerners who were against the Republicans of this, you know, incompetent government and who were really kind of floundering to achieve any real significant progress in this period. That concludes part three of our chapter 15 lecture series. As always, study hard, and I'll see you soon.